My name is Chimobi Samuel Okoro. Currently a PhD student enrolled in Kem. My research area is in corporate surveillance. So let me begin. Um, can you all hear me? Online, you can also hear me online? Okay. Now, the first question is, what is corporate surveillance? It's kind of a weird concept. When you talk about it, people kind of imagine I've, someone has asked me what my research area is, and I told the person corporate surveillance, and the person was like, what the hell is that? So, corporate surveillance, is the monitoring of users by online actors using certain web technologies like cookies, tracking scripts, etc. And from the image I have here, I'm sorry, I need to ask a question. How many of us here use wristwatch wearables? The wristwatch wearables. You have one, the Fitbits, the wearables, you have one. How about the headphones, the Apple? Airport Pros and the Samsung Bots. How many of us use them here? Okay. And you can all agree with me that we all do Google searches, right? Yes. And you yes. still use Google Scholar for your research? Yes. Okay. That's very good. <laughs> uh, but I want you to understand something now. By default, if you're using any Google services, you agree to them collecting your data. You can take a look at their privacy policy whenever you have them. Just take your time to read it thoroughly. I know they can be disoriented, but they've made it more user-friendly and quite more educative. They've included videos to explain whatever they do with our data. But by default, I want you to know that Google knows the heart rate. They know when you're running. They know what you're doing at every point in time. They know when your lunch time is. So you make Google searches, right? By this, they monitor every keyword you search online. They know everything about how do they do this. They use certain tools like HTTP cookies. Then they implement certain techniques like browser fingerprinting, device fingerprinting, online profiling. I will start with HTTP cookies. HTTP cookies is the earliest corporate surveillance tool which was developed to give web applications memory. So the idea behind HTTP cookies was to enable the web application know you know, continue from where you stop the next time you visit. So whenever you visit a web application for the first time, you set some preferences like currency, language, time zone, and all that. So in order for the web application to remember all this, so the next time you come, you don't have to preset them again. The web application uses cookies to remember all your preferences and know more about you. Then they use certain techniques like browser fingerprinting. Now, browser fingerprinting is a bit tricky because they just use it to learn about your browser, how unique your browser is. So they can use browser fingerprinting to uniquely identify the type of browser you use, like the presettings you have on your browser, like the fonts you use on your browser, your theme on your browser, the window resolution of your browser. These are some preferences. You, like for example, I for person, I don't like my browser on full screen. I actually need it on half of my screen so I can do other things. So these are some presettings you can be identified with. As well as for some of us who love to use special fonts. I know I've, I've once used one before. Who likes to use special fonts? Okay. Now, device fingerprinting. This is another technique used to identify you as a user. Um, I don't know if you've noticed this. Your, if you have two devices at the time, they don't clock five o'clock at once. I don't know if you've noticed it. Like one gets to 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock or whichever time before the other. So one is about a second or 5 or 10 milliseconds behind. <sighs> Only to my greater surprise it was intentionally done. 
current lock skills to use them to uniquely identify the special the type of device you're using so this is one okay this is one technique in corporate surveillance now you have online profiling this one is a bit complicated you all have facebook accounts how many how many of us here have facebook accounts okay and you all have your facebook accounts all filled up your profile all updated you how many of us have posted a picture of the conference on instagram or facebook or anything oh no one and how many of us have posted a picture about the conference on instagram Good. now Personal as a user, you let this information to these corporate organizations. So you keep your profile updated, you have different details about you, your marital status, your age, your relationships, you include your siblings in your Facebook account to share pictures, videos, updates, and locations and other. Someone is actually watching other than your friend, other than your friends. And you need to know that there are some corporate organizations spying on you with or without your consent. consent. Now, moving over to analytics. Whatever data they collect on you online is useless without analytics. So now analytics gives meaning to the data. So for example, they, like for example, Google takes a list of web applications you visited recently, all your activities online. That data is meaningless except they analyze it and draw some inference on it. So with the inference they draw on it, they can maybe serve targeted adverts, develop better business models. It is whatever they want to do with it, but analytics gives meaning to data. So whatever data you collect, even in your research or anything, if you don't analyze it properly, it's meaningless. And your IP address is actually something that uniquely identify is actually a communication identity online but is something you can be you can be identified with and uh, something that they could use to know your geographical location probably the country where you're operating from or they say but not actually your pinpoint where you are at exact Now, what's the relevance of surveillance to corporations? What do they use your data for? Google starts a lot of targeted adverts, likewise Facebook. So you've, we all know the case of Cambridge Analytica scandal or something about political targeting and political opinions. You didn't get the news? Yes, we did. Oh, okay. So these are some of the relevance of surveillance for corporations. They use this to understand you, they categorize into a group and then they know what contents to serve you. Yeah. <laughs> How many of us here likes being followed? You walk into a shopping mall and you have a drone following you up and down. Who likes that? No. <laughs> That's actually the effect of corporate surveillance on you. So you may not know it that you're being followed or you're being watched or everything you do is being recorded but it's basically what happens is now what has been done about corporate surveillance initially when the whole cookies was started and the w3c developed what they call p3p project it's quite unfortunate that that project is obsolete today because it's for me it's the most practical solution to corporate surveillance it's brought control to the user now, what does, the P3, what does the P3P project mean? It means that the web application has to avail you a list of privacy pre preferences settings, and then you have your own privacy preferences configured on your browser. Now, your browser compares the two preferences and knows what to retreat at every point in time. So it gives you control over your privacy, but unfortunately, it's obsolete now. So we now have to rely on the GDPR, which initially mandated web applications to give the user 
the option to accept or reject the use of cookies and some other tracking techniques but lately they made some amendment to it to lighten the restrictions and they now allow essential or strictly necessary cookies which is being exploited today by the use of CNM plugin. We don't want to get to that point. Sorry, thank you very much. Any questions? Quick one. What's the, uh, what is the aim of your PhD? Now, the aim of my PhD is this. I get, I get to understand the various techniques using surveilling people online, how they work, and possible ways to help the user maintain privacy online. You, it's a quite unfortunate that you can't bring a total stop to it. Because the user actually puts him or herself at risk. Because many of us here use Fitbits and that, but we don't actually take time to go through privacy policies. How many of us here just read privacy policies before you visit the website? Oh, you can't read it. That's very good. Do you understand it? Because it's sometimes disorienting, or most of the time it's disorienting. And it's very annoying to read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very annoying to read, believe me. A lot of researchers have done study on how the reading and um, the format is being presented and it's crazy. So you as the user, you put yourself out there for these corporations to surveil and you just have to get to learn ways to control the activities on you and how they monitor you and whichever best solution you need to protect yourself better online. Does that answer your question, Lipika? Yes, it does. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Any other question? Very nice presentation. Yes. You engage online. Very well. <laughs> no. All right. Thank you. Thank you.